me the strength to stand for you when I don't want to hurt another for you open my mind to know your truth without doubt sing for you Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to this telecast of Living Strong. It's always our privilege and our joy to come your way, uh, spend this time with you in the Word of God, and also uh, pray with you. And thank you for watching these telecasts, and I trust uh, they are enriching your life and helping you uh, grow strong in your walk with God and in your ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. Over the last several weeks, we've been studying through uh, Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, and today we start off with chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you. So Paul obviously is referring to his own uh, present condition. He was imprisoned 
in Rome. He's a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he doesn't see himself as a prisoner uh, to Rome. He sees himself on a heavenly mission. So in his earthly situation, he's able to see uh, something far greater and far beyond than just what meets the eye. And he says, I'm a prisoner, but I'm, this whole thing that I'm experiencing, it is for the sake of you Gentiles. For those of you who were not part of the Jews, you're, you're Gentiles, and this, whatever I'm going through is for you. And notice he says in verse 2, uh, if you have heard of the dispensation, the word dispensation simply means the stewardship, uh, the proper management of, that's what stewardship is. He says, uh, you may have heard of the dispensation, of the grace of God given to me for you. So here Paul is referring to his own call and ministry. He says, I am a steward of that. And that is just an endowment of the grace of God. We, we are stewards, you and I, we are stewards of the grace of God that has been poured out on our lives. The grace of God has been poured out on you. There is a call and a ministry on your life given to you by that grace, as we will see a little later on. Now, uh, uh, it, and Paul says that stewardship of the grace of God given to me, but it's for you, it's for your benefit. When God puts his grace on your life, endows you with his grace, it's always for a purpose, it's always for a people, so that by that grace, you can serve the people that he has called you to serve. Now, of course, in the New Testament, this is just a passing note here, in the New Testament, the word grace is used the same word, charis, grace, is used in several different uh, contexts. Sometimes it talks about the favor of God, the unmerited favor of God. But sometimes grace is also used to talk about the character of God, full of grace and truth, or grow in grace in the knowledge, and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes the word grace is used for divine empowering, as in this case, that is God supernaturally empowers us to fulfill his call and ministry uh, that he's given to us to serve certain people. And then the, the word grace is also used to talk about gifting, like it says in 1 Corinthians 12, when, it, when it, the same word charis or grace is used uh, to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Back in verse 3, he says, How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I've briefly written already, by which you may, you, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So Paul is saying here, that I received by revelation all of these mysteries, these things that were once hidden, uh, that was once not known to man, God revealed that to me. So Paul's preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and Paul's writing of all the epistles contains what he received by revelation, not what he received through learning or education, but it is was revealed to him by revelation through Jesus Christ, and that is what Paul writes. So when we read these epistles, they are actually a revelation. What God revealed to Paul, these were not the thoughts or the uh, thinking of a human person, but it was given to him by revelation. And he writes those mysteries, things that were once uh, secret, but now has been revealed to us. Verses 5 and 6, he says, These mysteries, which in other ages were not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by, his, by the Spirit, to his holy apostles and prophets. So previously, people didn't know all these things, but now the Holy Spirit has made known these deep secret things that, is, that we see in the epistles, uh, and he's made it known to the apostles and prophets. And uh, what, one, what is the important part of this mystery? mystery? Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospels, through the gospel. So through... Uh, one part of this mystery is that the Gentiles, those who were not par part of the, of the Jews, that even the Gentiles should come in and become heirs and become part of the same body through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 and 8, he says, Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So Paul is saying, I am a minister of the gospel, and this was given to me in, uh, in accordance to the gift of the grace of God, the grace of God that was put upon his life as a gift, and it was given to me by the effective working of his power. 
So I want you to see three things here. I want you to see the call of the ministry. I want you to see the fact about the grace of God given for that call of ministry. And then I want you to see that there is the effective working of its power. This is what happened. For, and just like Paul, for all of us, these three things are important. There is a call or there is a ministry that God has for each one of us. And there is the gift of the grace of God that is always in line with that call and aligned to that ministry that God has for us. And in line with that ministry, in line with the grace of God, there is the effective working of God's power. God's power works through our lives, aligned to the ministry that God has given to us, and aligned to the grace of God that's been given to us. So there is call, there is grace, there is power. And God has given that to you as well. You need to find out what is the call of God on your life? What is the grace of God that's been gifted to you? And what is the effective working of His power? As you begin to move in the call of God and begin to move in the grace of God on your life, you will find the effective working of God's power through your life. And he says in verse 8, To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So he says, look, I am the least of all the saints. I am undeserving of all of this. And you know, that, that's wonderful. It's just a wonderful revelation and wailing of Paul's heart and mind that regardless of how much God has used him, he walks with this mind. I am the least of all the saints. And it is only by the grace of God that I'm able to proclaim these unsearchable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. Uh, very, very important. Verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ Jesus, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he says, God gave me this grace that I should preach the unsearchable riches of Christ so that all can get an understanding that they have been called to fellowship in this powerful revelation, this powerful mystery that has been unveiled to us through Jesus, and that the wisdom of God is now revealed through the church, even to the powers of darkness and the angelic beings in the heavenly realms. So you can imagine the spirit world, the unseen world, the powers of darkness, there are angelic beings. They are looking at the church, the body of believers who have been washed and redeemed uh, by the blood of Christ. They're looking at the church and they're seeing God's amazing wisdom being revealed or played out, being displayed in the church. And uh, this is the eternal purpose that God had, which he carried out through Jesus Christ. This is something God planned even before he created everything, that he would redeem man who would fall and go astray, but he would redeem us and he would bring us into this glorious place of, of sons and daughters of God, part of his own household, uh, being part of his family, redeemed by the blood, and this would be a demonstration of the greatness of his wisdom. And this un the unseen world would see that and stand amazed. Verse 12, in whom, that is in Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. So ha God having done all of this, what do we have now? As people of God, we have boldness. We have access and boldness to come, come before God with confidence through Jesus Christ. So now we are in this amazing relationship with God where we can come to him with boldness, with confidence. We have access with boldness and confidence through faith in Jesus Christ. So I want us to understand that, that because we're in Jesus, we can approach God boldly and with confidence. You and I don't need to go before God as cringing, fearful slaves, but we come before God as sons and daughters as people of his own family, those whom he has redeemed by his blood, who are part of his eternal purpose. And we come in boldly with confidence and we can ask, we can petition, we can pray, we can intercede, we can go before the throne of God and ask for things. And that is what exactly Paul says in the next verse. He says, therefore, verse 13, therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is for your glory. Verse 14, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
from whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. So he tells the believers in Ephesians, you know, you don't get, uh, you don't uh, lose heart. You don't get discouraged just because I'm in prison. You know, I'm in prison, but I know I can access the throne of God with boldness and confidence. And so I go be boldly before the throne of God. And yet he says, I bow my knees. That means I am submitting to his lordship. I recognize who he is. I am bowing my knees before God and I come before his throne and I am praying for you and I'm praying to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So he's saying, I'm praying to the Father and he has a family. Part of the family is in heaven, part of that family is in earth and this whole family derives their identity from the Father. So you're part of that family. Your identity is in the family of God and in the Father. That means you derive who you are as a son and a daughter of God, as being part of the family of God. Because he says that whole family is named after the Father, meaning receiving their identity from the Father himself. And so Paul reveals to us here in the next few verses another part of his prayer for believers something that you and I can use when we pray for the local church or when we pray for our own selves. So what is Paul praying for the believers there? We start over there in verse 16. He says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So verse 16, first part of his prayer. I want you to be strengthened with might, with the power of God, in your inner man. So he says, you know, according to God's unlimited riches that he has, I'm praying you will become strong in your inner person, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that's something you should pray for yourself. And that's something you should pray for other believers. God, I want them to be strengthened with the power of God in their inner person. The inner person must be full of faith and full of power that comes from the Holy Spirit. So when you're strong in your inner person, you can do great things. The works that you do will be in proportion to the strength of your inner man. That what you're able to do for the kingdom of God will be in proportion to your, the strengthening of your inner man. And so you need to strengthen your inner man by his spirit, drawing from his spirit through prayer, through meditation in the word, uh, through uh, your faith in the word, you strengthen your inner man, you draw strength from the Holy Spirit and you build that strength into your inner person. Verse 17, the next part of his prayer, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So Christ may dwell in your hearts, may take up residence. And really when you understand that in the context of all his other episodes, like in what he says in Galatians 4.19, he's talking about Christ being formed, Christ being fully formed in your heart. That means Christ-likeness developing in your inner person, that you become more and more like Jesus in your inner person. Thirdly, he says that you will be rooted and grounded in love. That means everything you do will spring forth from a foundation or from a flow of love, that you'll be rooted and grounded in love. Everything you do in life, you do it out of the love of God. You walk in the love of God. Your foundation is the love of God. Everything you do is rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18, he says, and that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which, is, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So he says, I want you to be rooted and grounded in love. That means your strength, your foundation, everything you do comes out of love. And I want you to also understand how great is the love of God that is for us who believe. He said, this is so great. You, we cannot know the length, the breadth, the depth, the height. There is no measure to God's love for us. And because we are so loved by God, we are rooted and grounded in the love of God for us and in God's love for other people. So everything we do, we, we move in love. We, are, we know we are loved by God, and so we operate out of that love towards people. And then he says, I want you to be filled with the very fullness of God. To everything that is in God, I want it to be in you. And that's an amazing prayer that we find Paul praying often in his episodes, when he tells people, I want you to be filled with all the fullness of God. Just imagine, I, I think our minds cannot even grasp this, that the fullness of God, the very essence of God, the nature of God, all that God is filled with is virtues, his character, his power, 
will now flood our beings, that we are filled with the fullness of God. Of course, this is a progressive, continuous process, but that's what God wants for us, that we should be filled with all the fullness of God. All that's in him is, uh, uh, should fill us. So that's, uh, uh, and then he says in Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21, as he concludes, as we close up that chapter, he says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that is working us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And he says, you know, God is able to do much more than we can ask or think according to his power that's at work in us. So we see from chapter 1, Paul says, it's the resurrection power of God that's made available to us. Then in chapter 3, he says, I want you to be strengthened with that power in your inner man. I mean, I want you to possess that power. God has made that available to us. Now you need to take it and appropriate it, make it a part of you. And then he says, with that power flowing through you, God will do things that you cannot even imagine. Beyond what we can ask or think, God is able to do such kinds of things through our lives so that he will receive the glory through the church. That we are all here for one purpose, and that is to bring him glory throughout all generations. What a powerful chapter. I want to encourage you to meditate and receive uh, the truths that are from this chapter. Begin to walk in it and apply it. Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. It's the All People's Church Bangalore app. The home screen has a five minute uh, daily devotional, five powerful minutes of teaching from the Word of God every day. Uh, you can watch the video or listen to the audio. We also have a daily Bible reading and prayer guide. We call it Journeying Together, where we give you a portion of scripture to read and uh, points to pray about. And we journey together through the Word of God, entire Bible, uh, once every two years. We also have a sermon key point, which is a five minute summary of the Sunday sermon. So in five minutes, you get the key highlights of the sermon. We also have life group study guides that you use to study in your life group based on the Sunday sermon. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the word of God for you. We have a section called gospel with tools to help you share the gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called reasons where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. And people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called faith builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the word of God. We have a section called identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called on how to, where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry? We have a section called group study guides, where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes, and this, this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores Search for All People's Church Bangalore. Download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you. Before we close off uh, this telecast, I'd like to take some time just to pray with you. So if you are a person who, is, who has never made a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
then I want to pray with you and ask you and invite you to make a commitment to say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to live for you. I want you, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. And also right after I lead you in that prayer, I want to pray for people who might be watching, uh, who might be sick or hurting in their bodies and uh, in their minds or maybe having challenges and problems and in their life situations. And I want to pray with you. And if you will join with me in prayer, believe God. I believe that the power of God will work in your life because God's resurrection power is made available for us. And God can do what we, beyond what we can imagine or think. He's able to bring healing to you. He's able to deliver you from bondage and addictions. He's able to uh, turn around your situations. And I believe it will take place if you will pray with me. Let's pray together. If you'd like to, I encourage you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. I believe you died for me and you rose again. I make the choice to accept you as my Lord and Savior. Help me to follow you the rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, because of the exceeding greatness of your power that's made available to us who believe, because of the authority of the name of Jesus, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, I command every sick person watching to be released from their sickness, disease. I release you in the name of Jesus. I break off every yoke of the devil. I break off every oppression of the enemy over your body and your mind. And I command you be free. I command every spirit of infirmity come out. Every oppressive spirit of darkness come out. Release the people of God. And Lord, I pray your wholeness and blessing on their mind, their bodies. And God also pray that you meet every need, Father, in their lives, release miracles in their situations, in their circumstances, to turn things around for your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.